Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install uh, Vicuña on CosOS using Big Bear CosOS, third-party app store. So, a, a, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. So this is what I'll be installing today, uh, Vicunja. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But um, so it's open source, it's self-hostable to do app. You, you can organize everything on, on the platform. Um, this is what it looks like. It's really nice UI actually. It's got a Kanban board and uh, it's got the last viewed, the current task, uh, overview, upcoming projects, and then labels, a a teams. And then that, there's your to-dos. You can do a Gantt and a table and a Kanban, like I just said. Um, you can stay organized. You can collaborate with peers. Uh, you, use it how you need it. Um, we're going to show it on Cos OS today. Um, so you can see the features over here. Uh, so uh, uh, stay organized, cl collaborate with peers, like I just said, an open source, uh, built for speed. Uh, this is another task, and then ta tasks are not only simple tasks. You can uh, let Vicunja uh, remind you of tasks when they're due. So it's got rem reminders in it, a uh, quick add magic, uh, due dates, labels, assignees. Um, it's got all the features that you wanted to do, really. Um, and then tables, uh, import your tasks from Todoist, uh, Trello, or Microsoft To Do. That's a really nice feature. La labels, relations, save filters, uh, due dates, pro priorities, sh share links, that delegation, and CalDev, and then um, attachments. So it does have docs, and you can go in there and see the docs, and it sh shows you a lot to do with it. So that's what we'll be installing today. So now I'm gonna start on Big Bear Cost OS. Uh, uh, it's a third party app store that's maintained by Big Bear Tech World and the Big Bear community. Um, you'll need the app store URL right here, but uh, it has a lot of apps. So uh, it's growing a lot. So um, this is what we'll be installing. Um, I did make a video on how to install this. Uh, the Big Bear Cost OS on Cost OS, but I'm going to go over that in this video as well. Um, so to install a custom app store, you will need Cost OS version 0 0.4.4 .4 or newer. So I'm going to go over here and, and scroll up and to app store URL right here. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to go over to my Cost OS and get the app store set up. So I'm going to start on my Cost OS. I'm going to go to app store right here. And then I'm going to go over here to add source. And then I'm going to paste in the URL that we copied. It's a dot zip. So now I'm going to add. And then now we have 140 apps and you can see Big Bear Tech World here. If you did have another app store in there, you, you would just come down here and add source um, and then add. Um, so you can refresh the page, go back into the app store and then go to the categories over here. It's set to all right now, but you can, you can see Big Bear Cost OS right here. So I'm going to click it. And now you can see all the apps in Big Bear Cost OS and the one that we will be installing today. So now I'm going to start on Big Bear Cost OS. There will be a link on the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to uh, go on apps. And then I'm going to scroll down to Vicunja right here. And then now I'm going to go in the Docker Compose. So the name of the Cost OS app is Big Bear Vicunja. And then the services, and then the service underneath the service is called front end. And there's three services. There's front end, API, and then there's the DB to where you store all the data in. Um, so now the image is coming off Docker Hub by default because there's no URL before this. It's Vicunja front end, and then it's using the latest tag. The container name is gonna be called Vicunja and then front end. The ports down here, this is on the host side, and this is on the container side, 8081. And if this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it inside of the Cost OS a UI. And then the environment variables, uh, the Vicunja API URL, and you will need to change this to your Cost OS IP. 
Um, so now restart and let's stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then we'll try to restart. And then it depends on the DB and the API to be up. And that's the services down here. And then now it's going to set a network. So it's going to set it in Vicunja network. That's defined all the way down here. It's a bridge network, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to scroll back up. So um, now it'll set some cost to specific information to explain the ports. And then now the API service down here, this is uh, coming off Docker Hub by default. There's no URL before this. And Vicunja and API, it's using the latest tag by default too. Cont container names called Vicunja API. The environment variables. So this is for the da a database down here. And then uh, the service, a JWD, a JWT secret. You can change this. Um, and then the Vicunja service front end URL. Um, and then now ports are 3456 on the host and then 3456 on the container. You do not change the containers port. And then now volumes, so data, app data, dynamic variable, which has gotten from the name up here, Big Bear Vicunja. And then now um, the fi uh, files. So this is on the host side. The left is on the host side. The right is on the container side, app Vicunja files. It depends on the DB to be, uh, to be up. And then now restart policy is set to unless stop. So that means if you stop it for a reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then we'll try to restart. And then, so networks is Vicunja network. And uh, like I said, that's defined down there. I'm gonna set some cost to a specific configuration right here. And then now on the DB service down here, the image is set to MariaDB. That's coming off Docker Hub by default and the Docker image tag is set to 10. And then now the container name, Vicunja DB, and then commands, and then the environment variables, which should match up here, um, right here, and right here. Now, when the DB is deployed on here, you cannot change these environment variables anymore. You will need to use SQL to change the users. Um, so volumes, so data, app data, and then dynamic variable, which is gotten from the name up there. And then MySQL. So this is on the host side, and this is on the container side. So var lib MySQL. You do not change the container side, either the ports or the volumes. And restart and let's stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then now I'm gonna set it in the network, the Kunja net a network. And then the cost of specific configuration. And then now I'm going to define the network. So why we do it, why we put it in the network is up here. Um, Vicunja database host is Vicunja DB. And that is the container name down here. And if we didn't put it in the network, it wouldn't work. Um, it wouldn't be able to use this, uh, the container name, the service name. So um, now, Cause a specific configuration for the App Store, actually, and the architectures of what the Docker containers support. So AMD64 and ARM64. The main is a front end, so that's the that runs with the front end up here. The the um, these uh, the service name. So now um, that's going to be the main service that it goes into um, the web UI. Um, so a description for the App Store, the tagline the developer name, and then the author of the, of the Docker Compose, the icon being used, and then the thumbnail, and then the title, and then the category, so you can find all the apps in Big Brick OS, and then the port map is 8081, and then scheme is HTTP. So, um, so that's a little bit about the Docker Compose. So now we're gonna install the app so I'm gonna start my cost OS, I'm gonna App Store, and then I'm gonna do the search and Vic. So now you can see it's coming up from Big Bear Cost OS because of this right here, the category. I'm gonna go into it and then I'm gonna press install. What this is doing is it's downloading the Docker compose uh, the Docker cont container off of the 
uh, uh, the registry, getting it extracted, and getting it up with Docker Compose underneath. Um, so you can continue in background right here. And what this is doing is it's downloading the uh, Docker containers, like I just said. So now it's up and running, and it's ready to go. So now I'm going to change the environment variables. So I'm going to go up here to the top right, and then I'm going to go settings. And then now I'm going to um, go I go to front end. And then now I'm going to go to a Vicunja API URL. And I'm going to change this value right here. So I'm going to paste it in, and this will be your IP that you use to access your cost OS. And then now I'm going to say save down here. And then it's going to reload the containers. So we got that done. So now I'm going to go over the cost OS options. So if you go up to these vertical dots right here, you can open, you can set, set some tips. This is like a notepad where you can go down and edit it and then you press and then you type in testing or whatever you want. It'll reload the container in the background, get it back up. You go back in the tips and it did save. You can go in the settings and you can edit the containers down here. Um, and then you can press the save button down here. You can also go into the cont containers in the, t the terminal. And there you go. You can also see the logs is great for debugging. Um, you can export the Docker Compose right here. So I'm going to exit out of that. So you can go back into vertical dots again. And you can check for updates for the current tag it's on. And then uninstall, restart, and power off and on. So now I'm going to um, I, I go over the files. So you, you can go in the files app. And Cost OS makes it extremely easy to look at your files with the files app. So I'm going to go in the app data. And then a big bear, a Vicuja, a Vicuja. Um, So now... You can go into it, you can see the files. You can go backwards and you can see the MySQL files. Um, and you can also go up here to check mark. You can download, copy, cut, delete, and then cancel. You can also go up these top right uh, horizontal dots. You can download, copy path, rename, cut, copy, share, and then delete. So that's where your files are located. So now we're going to open into the, uh, the web UI. So you can open it from here or you can go open it from here. So now once you're opened into this, you can see that it's connected into, uh, to your uh, cost OS IP and then three, four, five, six, this is on the, the API um, ser a service. So now I'm gonna cr cr create an account down there and now I'm gonna give a username and then a email and then I'm going to just do a password. And then now I'm going to create an account. So you can see that it might need a longer password. Okay, now I'm in. And um, you can see, you can add an, uh, a task up here. You can import uh, a, da a data from uh, Vicuña. And then a tick tick. You can go over here to overview, get back to the screen. You can see upcoming ta uh, task. And you can filter down here. You can select a, a date range. You can also see pro projects. So you can go and do a filter for that. And then you can uh, set a new project. So Big Bear project. And then now you can put a parent project in or a color or other. And then you can create and now you're in the Big Bear project. You have a lot of options. And then you can go to Gantt uh, table and then Kanban. You can add a, ta a task in the backlog. You can create a new bucket. Then that, now you can move this task between this one and this one. And you can see the table of the task. And then you can see the list view and you can mark it as done or unmark it. You can move this around. Um, you can create another task and then you can do that one. And then you can um, move them around like this. You can also filter, um, you can search them. So there you go, you can search. So you can see the upcoming 
of the projects and you can also um, put the project over here in the sidebar. You can set labels. You can create a new label right here. And you can see your teams. You can create a new team right here. And then that, now you've created a team. You can go back to the project really easy because we uh, we start it. You can go up here to settings and you can set your settings. Like general settings, you can cha I change the name, the default pro project. So big bear pro project, then you can set that as default. You can set the a time zone, color scheme, quick add magic m m mode, and then language, uh, sen send me reminders for tasks via email. And then you can update your password. You can update your e e email address. You can set a avatar, so a gravatar, marble, and then upload. Um, you can set a two-factor authentication, export your Vicuña, and then import in them um, and then caldav right here uh the api token so you can interact with the vicuña uh, api and then you can delete your account right here so that's a little bit about vicuña and the what the ui looks like and roll the bloopers hello my name is christopher and today i'm going to show you how to install Vicuña on Big Bear Cost OS. Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Vicuña on Cost OS using Big Bear Cost OS, a third party app store. So, if you like to sheep. Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install. Uh, really? So, I hope you enjoyed the bloopers, and if you did, Make a comment down below and let me know if you uh, want me to do some more of them at the end of the videos now, from now on. So, uh, videoing's not easy, and uh, I want to show, I guess, the behind-the-scenes parts. So, stay tuned for more. So, I just sh uh, showed you start from finish on installing Vicuña on Cost OS using Big Bear Cost OS. So, if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.